It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, this next question is from Mary. Uh, Mary says, my husband has multiple employers. Therefore, he has multiple 401k accounts that he can use. How do you evaluate which one is the best account to use and to max out? So you got a bunch of different options. How do you know which one you should use? Should you just use one? Should you do all of them? Are there things to consider if you go that route? How do you navigate that? Mary, you got a few things going on there. First, I want to give you some guidance on, you have to be careful. This mm-hmm. is kind of danger, danger territory because I guarantee all the employers don't know about each other. That's right. Or they, they might know about each other, but they're but not the keeping, they're not, plans they're not all running other. on the same accounting systems or, or, or retirement compliance systems. And, and, and I think you understand this, Mary, because you're asking the question. There's what's called 415 limit, limits, meaning that your husband um, can only contribute up to the maximum contribution per year across all plans. That's right. And, and like I said, they don't know about each other. So he could put 19.5 in this one. He put 19.5 in this one. And everybody's going to feel like this is hunky-dory and this is A-OK. Until. Until you go to do your taxes and, the, and your, your tax preparers go back, what have you done? Whoa. Because you, you've, you've exceeded the 415 limits. So let, let's talk about this. First of all, let's if you've got three employers – Let's rank them. Let's look at all their plans and say, hey, who's got the best access to investments? Uh-huh. Who's got the lowest cost options? Who has the least amount of like administrative fees, advisor fees? Let's figure out who's got the best stuff going on and rank them one, two, and three. Then let's put another category in here is let's say, Who's giving me the most That's money? It. Yep. Meaning that is this employer give me, if I put in 3% here, or is this employer give me 6%? Let's make sure we know how much free of money each employer is offering. And then once you know the what each employer is offering you in free money, you can kind of create your own decision matrix mm-hmm. where you don't, you you completely respect that free money. Because there, look, guys, we do the financial order of operations. Look at the first three steps here. This is if you go to moneyguy.com slash resources, step one, deductibles cover. That's just to make sure you keep your financial life out of the ditch. But look what number two is, employer match. That's yep. free money. Why is that ahead of high interest debt? Because we all know credit card debt, it's making these banks filthy rich. So why in the world would we put step two as employer match? It's because Free money of 50%, 100% guaranteed is just money that even exceeds credit card debt that you're paying 20% interest on because it's 50 to 100% guaranteed rate of return. You cannot disregard or neglect that. So that's why I'm saying decision matrix, figure out employer match and free money, figure out which plans are the best, and then figure out how you maximize and work within those 415 limits to, to create your best scenario. And sometimes, you know, it, it's difficult, right? So it depends on your level of wealth. Let's uh, suppose, Mary, that you and your husband have done very well and you've got a seven-figure mm-hmm. portfolio. You may choose, let's say you have two 401k plans that are really, really good. They both have low-cost options and they both throw at a good provider and they both have a healthy interface. But you may look at your outside assets and say, man, you know, in my taxable account and in my Roth accounts and in my other account, I have really great equity options. I don't really have any good fixed income options. You might make the decision as to which 401k to use based on which one better completes the portfolio you're trying to construct. This one might have really, really good fixed income options. I'm going to use this one. Or maybe this one has really, really good equity options. I'm going to use that because I can get my fixed income elsewhere. I I think you're right, Brian. It's kind of this... Uh, three or four step process to analyze it and then figure out which, just like your thumbprint, is perfect for your unique financial situation and circumstance.